So it appears that we have half a month to finish this series if we want to do it before this year's election. I think we can do it. I don't know about you. Let's see. Let's see how far we can get. We are going to be continuing Mr. Beat's American presidential election series. We have the election of 1820. Uh, James Monroe versus... Yeah, so this should be fun. I, I'm, I'm very excited to get started with this one. I love this period in American history. We're really starting to get into, if not the age of Jackson, this period is the setup. This is really what's going to lay the groundwork for somebody like Andrew Jackson, actual madman, to be president of the United States. So that should be entertaining. I'm excited. Let's get it started. Mr. Beat presents Presidential Elections in American History. The ninth presidential election in American history took place from Wednesday, November 1st to Wednesday, December 6th, 1820. Oh, it was a weird one. Mostly because James Monroe was so popular that everyone was too afraid to run against him. That's right, folks. This was the third and final presidential election in which a candidate basically ran unopposed. And obviously George Washington there. I made the comparison between James Monroe and George Washington a little bit. Like, really, you can't be George Washington. George Washington is like a once-in-a-lifetime figure. I mean, there are plenty of people who will take the George Washington role in the founding of their own country, and you can be like, that person is like that country's George Washington. O outside of that, though, um, you never forget your first in this sense, because he, he was just like a perfect first. Obviously, my boy George Washington ran both times. My boy! Opposed. Like I said, Monroe was extremely popular during his four years in office, a time known as the era of good feelings. However... And I talked about this. Yeah, there are good things about it, but there are also some more negative things about it. Factionalism is going to grow, and that's going to give way to the age of Jackson. Um, if you want more on that, watch the previous one. However, some people were understandably upset due to the economic hard times caused by the Panic of 1819 and the rising tension between slave states and free states surrounding the passage of the Missouri Compromise. Yeah, the Missouri Compromise, and here we go. Uh, to add a slave state, they decide, let's add a free state. Let, let's just keep keeping this balanced as long as we go. We'll see if we can keep this going until we get to the ocean. And that means we will keep the slave and free states balanced in the sense of uh, the government. Because slaves and free states are often going to oppose each other when it comes to making... Uh, uh, political decisions so you, you want to keep that balance or else everything's gonna blow up into like a civil war or something like if one side feels like they're being oppressed or whatever they might think about seceding from this union that doesn't seem to serve them anymore maybe um but the panic of uh 1819 is it lands in a very interesting place here this is definitely a product of banks and speculation and all sorts of sketchy financial dealings so the banks are going to be blamed big time later on for all the suffering that goes on and andrew jackson coincidentally happens to be very anti-bank this is setting things up rather perfectly isn't it so we're gonna have andrew jackson he's gonna be the hero for everybody when he comes in to wreck the bank and economically that doesn't really work out that great in in the long run like yeah there are some good things but in his uh administration like yeah let's pay back the debt or whatever but there's going to be some financial hardship that comes along with that as well but moreau happens to be in between the worst of this near depression that we're about to go into it starts in 1819 and it gets at its worst at 1821 so this election it's like Okay, he, he's still redeemable at this point. People aren't going to really come down on him. So there's no real competition. 
slave states and free states surrounding the passage of the Missouri Compromise. However, while the country did seem to divide a bit to threaten the single-party system, Monroe was still loved by almost everyone. Since the president's renomination was never in doubt, few Republicans even bothered to show up to the nominating caucus. Oh, there was really? also virtually no campaigning for this election. Even former Federalists supported Monroe. The few Federalists who remained failed to nominate a candidate. They Saying that there's no, there, there was no direct campaigning, uh, Monroe, the way that he ran the presidency, the way that he held the office was very old school in a sense. He would tour pretty much. He would take tours of the nation uh, and maybe actually showing up at in people's towns or whatever. Uh, as the president of the United States, and maybe that will endear you to them because they can actually see you and they're not just thinking about you as this vague figure in the distance that's dictating their lives. The fact that he actually got around the country a decent amount and uh, uh, directly appealed to people, that might have helped them a little bit going into this. They did nominate a serious vice president candidate named Richard Stockton. This was the Federalists' last time to participate in a national election. Okay, Democratic finally. Republicans would renominate Daniel D. Tompkins as well. Four new states, Mississippi, Illinois, Alabama, and Missouri, all participated in a presidential election for the first time in 1820. Dope. However, there was a delay with Missouri because it wasn't officially a state yet at the time of the election. There had been lots of arguing in Congress, with some saying Missouri's Constitution violated the United States Constitution. Nevertheless... Oh, Missouri's really? I didn't know about this one. I... I, I... I would love to know more about that because I, I actually didn't, I, I wonder what was wrong with it. I, I wonder if he goes into it. Maybe I should give him a second. Hold Missouri's on. constitution violated the United States constitution. Nevertheless, Missouri's electoral votes I would know. be counted in 1820, despite not officially becoming a state until the next year. And here are the results. No, we're not getting it. James <laughs> Monroe for the win, obviously. He won all of the electoral votes except one, as a matter <laughs> of fact. The one electoral vote against Monroe came from William Plumer, an elector and former U.S. Senator William from Plumer. New Hampshire. He voted for John Quincy Adams, the Secretary of State and son of former President John Adams. Okay, we finally have an opportunity to talk about John Quincy Adams. He's going to be the next president. We'll be talking about him more in the next video. Um, one thing, first of all, this guy, this guy over here, um, this portrait is perfect for a coin. If he did anything important, he would have been great to put on a coin. <laughs> I don't know. Just, that's just one of those things. It's that, it's that textbook coin pose. Um, John Quincy Adams was on paper. I emphasize that part. On paper probably the most qualified person to run for president at the point he did like out of anybody yeah he he might lack in like the military department but as far as roles that he held to be commander in chief he he spoke a bunch of languages he had a great experience as an ambassador secretary of state like he has so much going for him he he held a lot of the positions that really matter to qualify yourself for that role so by all means he should be the best president right well his presidency is not very well remembered and we are going to uh go into that next time we cover a mr bait video voted for john quincy adams the secretary of state and son of former president john adams why did he have to be such a non-conformist it's such a coin so picture they be featured in a video by mr beat well no actually he just thought monroe was not a good president tompkins remained the country's vice president monroe and tompkins didn't get three other electoral votes because the three electors had died and were not replaced yet this oh really is why mississippi only had two electoral votes counted despite the fact that a state is usually always guaranteed three electoral votes as far as the popular vote monroe was um popular of course yeah 80.6 percent of the vote 80.6 that's 16.1 Pretty much the remaining Federalists voted for, quote, no candidate. They didn't even bother to put a candidate forward. I mean, we know that they're dying, but I guess the rationale for that would be 
it's better to not put a candidate forward than to put one forward and have them lose. That would just, uh, especially if they lose really badly, that would have, that would really emphasize the fact that they're irrelevant at this point. And DeWitt Clinton, even though he didn't officially run for president in 1820, still got 1.8 percent of the popular vote. It's That's still kind of cool. More more states Give him credit for that. By popular vote by this time, with the country so united with who they wanted for president and vice president in 1820, the future looks so so bright. Okay, 1.34 percent of the population voted in this election. Remember that number when we go into the next one you might be surprised at how drastically that changed. We got to a point, I think we got to a point where it was like 4% before this, and that seemed like a lot. Check out the next election when I do one of these, or just watch Mr. Veed's video on 1824. It, it, it's a big difference. This is where it's really going to, th this is one of the last elections that has numbers quite like this it, it's going to jump up like crazy and once we get to uh not 24 but 28 it's a completely different ball game and that's why uh andrew jackson gets this reputation as a man of the people because he was selected by an incredible amount of people compared to previous elections it, it's it's like night and day we have this elite subset of people who's still kind of picking now. By the time we get there, it's going to be completely different. I'll see you for the next election, buddy. Buddy. <laughs> so this was a fun one. I think James Monroe is... I guess underrated. Really, I dislike most presidents. I have more complaints about presidents than I have compliments, but like he, relative to a lot of the people around him, James Monroe kind of had a mind for the office that I think is not really considered very much when people look back at history. People really jump from the War of 1812 to Andrew Jackson so quickly. It feels like the time in between really doesn't get the attention it deserves and that's why somebody like James Monroe gets passed over and I guess the relative peace we're gonna say of the time and like I've said it was a little more contentious than it's given credit for though you wouldn't be able to tell uh, the relative peace also makes him less exciting to learn about I guess uh, people are interested in war and conflict secession uh, all that sort of stuff, and they, they really want to get to that. I, I, I can understand why people are more interested in that stuff. Maybe I'm just into boring history, but it's not boring to me. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to be doing more of these. Obviously, we're not going to finish the series by the time the election comes around. I gave up on that a long time ago, but uh, I, I don't know if I ever really thought we were going to. Uh, but yeah, like this video if you like this video, subscribe for more. I'll be doing one of these probably still every week until the election and probably beyond that because these are a lot of fun. They're, they're short, they're sweet, and it's a nice overview of the country's history from like a top-bottom perspective. Although there's so much more to history than presidents, uh, this is definitely a very relevant perspective to get. So I am all done. I'm all done, guys. I'll, I'll see you next time when, when we do the election of 1824. Later.